Today on our 2009 Chevrolet Express van, we'll be installing the ETBC7 kit, part number ETBC7, and in conjunction with that, we'll be installing the Prodigy P2 brake controller, part number 90885. Now this vehicle here already has a four flat wiring connection installed, but it's stored inside the vehicle and not underneath the vehicle. So we're gonna to need to first get the four flat wiring connection down underneath the vehicle near the center of the hitch. Let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Now we first need to remove this panel right here. Now to actually remove the panel, you'll stick the flathead screwdriver or the trim panel removal tool underneath the bottom side and pry outward or towards the front of the vehicle. Now up inside this opening here, there's a piece of plastic that kind of blocks things off. We're gonna to need to take a large flathead screwdriver and loosen that up a little bit so we can slide our wiring down past it. Now we're gonna leave the screwdriver holding the piece of plastic up a little bit as we take an old section of airline tubing and fish it from the bottom up into the rear part of the vehicle. Now right here is the section of airline tubing that we just fed up from underneath the vehicle. We'll go ahead and take a little bit of electrical tape and connect the end of the four flat to our airline tubing so we can pull it down. Now we'll go down underneath the vehicle and use our pull wire and pull the four flat wiring down underneath the vehicle. Now that we have the four flat pulled down underneath the vehicle, we're gonna add a small section of wire loom to protect the wire as it comes out of this pocket right here. Now we'll go ahead and put this cover back in place. Then we'll route our four flat wire up and over the frame. Now we're gonna to need to take the bracket that holds a seven and four way plug and mount it to our bumper. Go ahead and hold the bracket up. Mark our two locations that we'll need to drill. Once we have our holes drilled out, we'll go ahead and attach the bracket to the bumper with the supplied hardware. Now we'll go ahead and strip back some of the protective coating on our duplex wire here. We'll then go ahead and strip back a little bit of wire on both the black as well as the white wire. And we'll be connecting the black and white wire with the black and the blue wire that comes on the seven-way connector. We're gonna go ahead and add another short piece of the wire loom to the back side of the plug to give the wires a little more protection as they go up, up and over the hitch. Now we'll go ahead and mount the seven and four-way plug to our bracket using the supplied hardware. Now we're gonna go ahead and make our connection with our four flat. Before we make our connection, we're gonna add a little dielectric grease, which is part number 11755. We'll be connecting this to the back side of the seven-way plug. And once we have it pressed together, we're gonna to go ahead and add a zip tie to make sure it stays together nice and tight. We're gonna go ahead and take our duplex wire here, feed it into the frame, and pull it out just a little farther forward. Now we have two wires left. We have a white wire with a ring terminal on it. The purple wire is for the reverse light circuit. On this install, we'll not be hooking that up, so we'll just tape it off for now. Now that we have our excess wire taped up, we'll go ahead and take our self-tapping screw and attach our white wire with the ring terminal to the frame of the vehicle. Now we're gonna need to route our duplex wire up into the engine compartment of the vehicle. We're gonna do this by routing it through the frame along the driver's side. We we'll use an old section of airline tubing to help us route the wire up there. When routing the wire, make sure you stay away from areas that may become hot, move, or have sharp edges, as all of these could damage the wire. Now we'll go ahead and use a pull wire from the top side of the engine compartment. That way we can pull our wire up into the engine compartment. Now we'll go ahead and use a zip tie to secure the wire up here in the engine compartment. Now we're gonna to need to strip the gray protective coating off the black and white wire all the way back up to where we just zip tied it off. Now we're gonna go ahead and route the black wire over here to the passenger side and we'll leave it there for now. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our utility knife and put a small slit in the rubber boot here in the engine compartment. We're gonna take a section of our pull wire and feed it from inside the cab and push it through the grommet through the slit that we just made. We'll then use a little electrical tape 
and attach our white wire to our pole wire. Now we'll go ahead and feed our extra 12 gauge wire through the rubber grommet in the firewall. We're gonna need about 10 extra feet of single 12 gauge wire. That's gonna be part number 12-1-1. What this extra wire is for is for the power wire on the back side of the brake controller that we need to route out to the battery. Now we'll go ahead and take the pigtail that comes with the brake controller and we'll need to butt connect the blue wire to the white wire that we just added a butt connector to and the black wire to the black wire. Now we're gonna go ahead and add some electrical tape to these two butt connections. Now there's two wires left on the pigtail. The white wire will need to add a ring terminal to it and that'll get grounded to the body of the vehicle. The red wire will tie in with the brake light switch and we'll need to first figure out which wire is hot only when the brake pedal is pushed in. We'll use our test light to figure out which wire that is. We've determined that the blue wire with the white stripe is the wire that we'll need to use our quick splice to attach our red wire from the pigtail. Now we'll go ahead and add a little bit of electrical tape to our connection here. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove this piece of interior trim here as there's some grounds underneath this panel area that we'll be tying our white wire in with. To do that, we'll need to use either a large flathead screwdriver or a trim panel removal tool to get the fasteners loose from the body. We'll first attach our ring terminal to the end of our white wire and then we'll attach it here at the grounding location. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some electrical tape just to clean up the wires up here near the actual connection point where it plugs into the back side of the brake controller. I will go ahead and reinstall the interior panel that we removed to put the ground screw in. Now we're going to go ahead and use the plastic pocket to mount our brake controller. We use the two little screws that come with the kit to do it. We're going to mount it here on the underside or the lower side of the dash here. We've already checked behind it. There's nothing behind it that can be damaged when we put the screws in. I will go ahead and show you how the connection will go onto the back side of the brake controller. There's a little tab right here. It'll go underneath this little clip portion right there. Go ahead and feed the wire through the back side of our pocket area. Now we can go ahead and plug it into the back side of the brake controller. We'll then slide the brake controller back down into the pocket. And finally, we use a few zip ties to secure up any excess wire up here underneath the dash. We'll then snip off any excess zip tie to clean up our install look. Now we'll go ahead and take the other black wire, which is the power wire to the brake controller, and we'll route that over to the side where the battery's mounted as well. And we'll go ahead and take a few zip ties to help secure our wires. We'll then snip off the excess to clean up our install look. Now we're gonna need to attach our two circuit breakers. We will first go ahead and mount the 40 amp breaker, as this will be for the 12 volt power that goes to the back of the vehicle at the seven way plug. We will then mount the 30 amp breaker, and that's for the power that goes to the brake controller. To mount both of our circuit breakers, we'll be using the self-tapping screws supplied with the kit. Now we'll go ahead and trim both of the black wires to length, and then we'll be adding one of the small ring terminals to each. Now we'll go ahead and take the black wire that goes to the 40 amp circuit breaker, and we'll connect it to the silver side of the circuit breaker. Then we'll take the other black wire and connect it to the silver or chrome side of our 30 amp circuit breaker. Now we're going to need to make two jumper wires, one to go from the copper side of the 40 amp circuit breaker, and one that goes from the copper side of the 30 amp circuit breaker over to the positive side of the battery. Now in order to connect our two wires to the positive side of this battery, we're going to be using the battery side bolt extender, part number DW05416. Next we'll go ahead and disconnect the positive side of the battery, and we'll need to remove the original nut that holds the positive wire to the battery. Now we'll go ahead and install the new battery extender and we found it works best if you use a socket wrench to tighten it down to the battery. 
Go ahead and slide the large ring terminals over the stud, and then you'll tighten the nut back down. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our brake controller. You can see here there's a C on the screen, and that means we have a trailer connected to it. The lever on the underside is the manual override button. The knob here, or the roller knob here on the left hand side, is the power adjustment. And this little button up here on this top right is the boost feature, or how aggressively the brakes will come on. Now when we don't have a trailer connected, if you pull the manual override, you'll get an NC showing that there's not a trailer connected. And that'll do it for the installation of our ETBC7 kit, part number ETBC7, and in conjunction with the Takansha Prodigy P2 trailer brake controller, part number 90885 on our 2009 Chevrolet Express Van.